We're going to solve this linear system and we're going to use elimination. Generally, the first one you learn, the first way you learn how to solve is substitution. And we're going to skip substitution because elimination is going to be much closer to uh, Gaussian elimination that we're going to learn very soon with uh, matrices. So this is problem number three and 8.1.1. And we have a system of two equations. We usually group it with this funky curly bracket here, and it may, you may be tempted to close it on the other side. You're more than welcome to, but for some reason, uh, it has been determined that we just group them on the left side without closing it with another curly bracket. So how many equations do we have? Two. How many variables do we have? We have an X, we have a Y. This is a seven, not a Z, an X and a Y. So we are in two dimensions. We also have fractions, which I don't particularly like. How do we get rid of fractions? There's uh, the best way to do it, multiply by the uh, least common multiple of all the denominators. So up here, we're gonna multiply by a three and a five, which is multiply by 15. Down here, nine and three, I can multiply by nine, and then by two, so multiply this by 18. So I will solve this in the blue pen here. So I'm gonna multiply this by 15, multiply this by nine times two is 18. So we have, be careful, you need to distribute the 15 everywhere. So 15 divided by three is five. So we're gonna start out with five X minus four uh, times three is minus 12 Y. And right here is gonna be a three times seven 21. Down here, 18 divided by 9 is 2 times 2 is 4x. 18 divided by 3 is 6 plus 6y equals 18 over 2 is 9. Now I have a much better system. You could rewrite the uh, grouping symbol here. It's actually a reasonably good idea if you're using elimination. If you don't group them, you're going to end up with lots of equations written all over your paper and at some point it may get very ugly and confusing. So I recommend if you're gonna be using elimination, which we won't be using for very long, uh, you wanna keep your equations together. You're not making new equations, you're modifying your original two, making new equations, or ma making a new system, but it represents the same uh, solution. So what can we do here? Probably easiest to eliminate Y's. How do we eliminate the Y's? Negative 12, if I double this, I'll have positive 12y. So what I'm going to do, I want to add two of these to the first one. So I'm going to go plus two. I'm going to use row two. So I'm going to add two of this row two equation up to row one. And what are we going to get? So you have to add two of every single part here. Two times four is eight X plus five is a lot of X's. Eight plus five, 13 X. Two times six is 12 minus 12. We have zero Y. That's the entire reason we did this. And then 18 plus 21 is 39 and I didn't do anything to the second equation, so I'm just gonna copy that down. So from here, you could tell me exactly what X is. How do you do that? Well, you could divide by 13. That's probably the way most of us would think. I'm going to, instead of divide by 13, I'm going to multiply by 1 13th. It has the exact same effect. So 1 13th times 13 is one. So we're gonna get X. I don't need to keep writing zero Y. I'm just going to be lazy and not even write that. I'm going to leave an extra space where the Y would go. And 39 over 13 is 3. Oh, it's a really nice equation. X equals 3. Now from here, a lot of us would do substitution. Oh, I know X is 3, and I can plug 3 in here. Solve for Y. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to reuse elimination to use this X to knock out the four X. How do I do that? So I'm gonna take negative four, row one, and add it 
to row two. So negative four row one, I'm gonna add that to row two. Row one doesn't change, x is still three. Row two, negative four times x is negative four x plus four x is zero x. Now I didn't have any y's, plus six y is six y. Negative four times three is 12. Negative 12 minus, uh, plus nine is three. So we have this, negative 12 plus nine, negative three. Yes. So x is three, and then really quickly, how do I get this last one? Just multiply by one sixth. X equals three and y equals negative three over six, which is negative one half. So our solution is a point, x is three, y is negative one half. How do I know if this works? Well, it should satisfy both original equations. So I could either plug them in here or I could plug them in here, assuming I didn't make any errors when I multiplied down here. So if I plug these values in, both of these equations should be true. How do I graph these equations? I'm gonna graph these versions here. They're a lot nicer. How can I graph them? I could solve for y, solve for y, get a y-intercept, get a slope. I also know they're linear, so they're lines. I only need two points to plot a line. What are Two points I can easily get from equation one. So we're first gonna start by graphing 5x minus 12y equals 21. The easiest point I can think of plugging in, when x is zero, what is y? So make an xy chart, when x is zero, what is y? Minus 12y equals 21. y equals negative uh, 21 twelfths. Uh, 21 twelfths. Now, it's pretty close to negative 2. And graph uh, will pick y to be 0. What does x need to be? I'm just going to be dividing here 21 fifths. That's close to 4. So I'm going to graph uh, this first one, 0. That's pretty close to negative 2. And 21 fifths, we'll say, ooh, I'm graphing on the wrong axes. That's not good, forget that graph. Go right here and graph it. All right, x is zero, negative 21 twelfths. And 21 fifths and zero. 21 fifths, bigger and zero. Two points, these happen to be the xy intercepts, and I'm gonna connect them with the line. All right, graph the other equation. It's a little bit nicer here. So we're gonna graph four x plus six y equals nine. Same thing, table of values, x, y, we're gonna pick zero for x first, zero. Uh, six y equals nine, nine divided by six is three halves. And when y is 0, x will be 9 over 4. All right, so 0 and 3 halves. Uh, we'll say that's somewhere right about there. 3 halves, and x is 9 fourths. That's a little bigger than 2. Put that right about there. And connect them together with the line. Of course, the line keeps going. Put arrows at the end. Uh, the point of drawing this, graphing this, is that we can see there is one point that they both have, and it happens to be three, negative a half. I was not super careful about the scale. It's relatively accurate, um, but you can definitely see that three, negative a half is pretty reasonable for that point right there. I could have been a lot more careful. Uh, using decimals here could be a little more useful, maybe easier to graph them. So this is I did not use any substitution here. This is pure elimination, which is going to be very similar to row operations. So if you're tempted to skip through some of these and just do substitution, I recommend do just pure elimination. And then you can graph and see where your one solution should be.